Hi, welcome to Bichitra Collective's Let's Talk episode two. Uh, we are having a conversation uh, with our members of our collective. My name is Sonali Gulati, and I'm having a conversation today with Divya Sachar, who is based in New Delhi, and I am in Richmond, Virginia. I'm going to have Divya introduce herself. Hi, I'm Divya Sachar. I'm a Delhi-based filmmaker and photographer and writer. and uh, it's a great honor it's it's a real privilege to be here talking to sonali and being part of bichitra thanks vidyas i'm sonali gulati and i'm an independent filmmaker i also teach uh, film making at a university here virginia commonwealth university and i'm based in richmond virginia right now but i'm originally from delhi so i feel a kinship with divya uh in in terms of having my roots from delhi i grew up in delhi yeah 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 so divya in fact you 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 from vasant vihar which is one of my favorite places there was priya cinema over there and i you know often used to bunk school with my best friend and go there yeah i used yeah. to bunk school and go there myself yes we share that in common yeah so we have a lot of things in common actually including in our films it's some sort of some sort of a vibe i we including in our films i've been noticing uh you know how for example 24 frames a day it eludes the fiction non fiction binary which is which is a very unfair formal binary that's been imposed upon us by i don't know the white canon or what i don't know who but uh yeah so i i in my film also in searcher i tried to you know not it's 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 fiction and it's non fiction it's an experimental documentary but you can't really call it it's it's an imaginative search and uh it's not documentary documentary and i find that in your film as well you know it's it's there is some fiction element and it's also a slice of reality yeah that's a really good point because i i totally agree with you i i that's sort of my idea of like approaching filmmaking is that for me i don't believe in these categories of genres and i yeah. find like blurring those boundaries of what is traditionally been defined as documentary or fiction or i mix animation i mix performance uh within my work and so uh you know 24 frames per day as you said you know originally the idea started when i was just traveling back and forth between india and the us and i would inevitably take taxis from the airport to my home or from my home to the airport and i'd have these conversations with various taxi drivers about who i was about my identity about my accent about you know um about the journey itself and there's something about like right uh, especially after you finish traveling there's you there's a piece of you that's kind of still your mind and physical part is still left in that place and there's a way in which your um it's not simply jet lag it's like there's something about having gone back home and come back that sort of lingers on and so for me and originally i started by documenting the conversations and asking taxi drivers can i record your conversation and then when i edited those together it was not really feeling cohesive like it wasn't clear like who are these different voices and so i ended up uh, uh ended up uh, writing down the dialogue and transcribing the dialogue that i had edited and then finding mm-hmm. someone to reenact the the dialogue that conversation between right, me and the driver right. and so there's this element of performance in there yes, which, yes. but it's based on documentary so there it yes, has yes. its roots so right. i i i i feel like in that respect yeah our work is really common in terms of genre blending but i think also there's this sort of connection that we have in our approach of um, the camera work 
and also uh, in, in terms of the stillness of the camera work i feel like there's this uh, we have this photography kind of background like this yes. common thread yes. that that for the most part we like the stillness of the fr- at least the yes. frame itself though yes. i've seen sometimes you kind of really do rotate the camera yeah. but yeah focusing on what's happening inside the frame rather than just sort of you know we a lot of, we don't use a lot of panning shots and we don't use a lot of uh, tracking shots we're just sort of holding the camera really sort of steady and and just observing life through it and the other piece that i also feel is really common is uh the sense of intuition with which we both work you know yes, and like defying yes. expectations so yes. like in your film uh, search uh, i noticed how in some ways you use like this sort of uh, like a graphic match you know going from a shot of the grinder to the washing machine to the tea cup and there's this sort of circle edit that you're following but you also like defy expectations by doing things like the music ends abruptly and uh and the connections you make the juxtapositions you make of like what your which image is next to which image i think yeah. is really sort of compelling and I'm, i wanted to hear you speak a little bit about the role of intuition in your editing in your process of filmmaking my process of editing was completely intuitive and uh, if my editing teachers were here they would just scream this was totally i mean you know there there was no logical or rational faculty guiding the edit you know it was completely intuitive and uh, so was often the sound design everything everything this entire film is more intuitive and uh, it's not a, like a fact based documentary as such you know it's 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 a it's what i would like to call a poem film so it starts with a certain uh, factual something like a scientific approach but actually it's totally it's incorporating what might even consider what might be even considered irrational you know like like reincarnation am i my grandmother's reincarnation something like that i'm hinting at that so this is all not about facts and uh, it's more like some kind of a poem experimental film but uh, in fact i sometimes wonder if one should even call it experimental because in some senses it's almost like a literalization of what was going on in my mind you know so it's it's almost like a literal rendition of what was in my mind and in that sense i would call it a documentary and it's got a little sci- scientific thing to it whether you know researchers sci- scientists these days they say that uh, trauma can be passed down uh, through generations you know through the genes to a genetic code and uh, so i wonder in an imagine in this kind of an imaginative way i am searching for an answer to how i got my schizophrenia you know so yeah and uh, i i also uh, you know sonali thought that uh, both you and i have uh, put ourselves in our films you know not just personal films uh per se but also by actually physically placing ourselves in our films so you talk about that and i'll i'll also see what i can speak about yeah i think that's a really good point i mean i'm i'm really interested in learning more about how your journey began in making such a like where did how did you conceive the idea and and how did you imagine it before you dived into it and I, i'd love to hear more about that but in terms of you know responding to your question about putting ourselves in in our in our films for me it really came my my interest in putting myself in the film my my films began when i was an undergraduate student at mount holyoke college in the us when i first came here and 
I started watching ethnographic films and most of the films were made by um you know wealthy white men who had the resources to travel to other parts of the world representing poor and poor the other and i was really interested in understanding like this question of like who has the power to represent whom and who gets to tell whose stories and i thought what would happen if cameras were given to people indigenous people to tell their own stories how different would those stories be compared to this you know um colonial gaze or or white gaze with which we are viewing the lives of these people so this idea of self representation really became important to me i thought we have to tell our own stories like mm-hmm. in order for that representation to feel more accurate and there's something very powerful about telling our own stories and so yes. for me that's where that idea of like putting myself in the film sort of stems from like telling that's my own story and and the fact that uh, the films are emotional but they lack sentimentality with I mean, i'm talking about your film really you know it it doesn't have to be uh, sentimental at all it's 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 very um how shall i put it it's clean in that way and the idea of home is very important to you as well right i see that yeah. in a lot of your films and not just this but in an, across your films the idea of home is very very important it is you know it you you really hit the nail on the head it, it the idea of home is definitely very important to me and i think in part because i've left home and my relationship with home i've left india and come to the us and in some ways i'm considered like the one who's abandoned home or i remember i used to be called like chock someone was like oh you'll just turn into a choco bar like you know like chocolate ice cream on the outside but <laughs> vanilla ice cream and my mother used to say like oh i hope you don't pick up this toilet paper culture you know like it was like this way in which and my friends in india would say are but you still have a so you're still indian like that like you like there's a way in which your authenticity is still valid and so i think for me like home is very complicated because it's the place where i grew up i grew up in delhi but home is also the place where i experienced you know like puberty and loss and, and my mother died in india while i was here in the us and and so for me home has been very very complicated but i think also as a as a filmmaker who's sort of migrated I, i kind of feel like i have two feet one foot in india and one foot here because i do spend my summers in india and i'm there for at least 3 months every year uh, not counting the pandemic and but the thing is that i think i'm also very conscious as an as an indian filmmaker from india living in the united states making films about india and trying to not exoticize india and not yeah. look at india through this very nostalgic lens with which uh, immigrants tend to look at india or look at home from this very sort of nostalgic romanticized uh, way and i'm co- very conscious of that like when i'm thinking of music i'm like i do not want to use the sitar playing like i'm very conscious of like i don't want to be that person who's who exoticizes india and so uh, in in some ways i'm almost jealous because in your film in in searcher there's a way in which there is a certain nostalgia with which you're looking at 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 objects around your grandmother's home and i'm almost envious of it because i feel like i can't look at things with or i maybe i don't permit myself to look at things with nostalgia because i feel like i'm then falling into this trope of like indian immigrant filmmaker living in That's the right. us looking back with this real like exoticization and nostalgic like drenched in nostalgia kind of way and so i'm constantly resisting that i'm like how can i how do i do this in a way where i can i can critique my life in the us but i can also i can, how do i be critical of of both homes because right now you know in some ways i feel like even the us is somewhat become part of home yes. 
just by virtue of the time that I've spent here. And I'm at that juncture where I've spent a little more time in the US uh, than I have in India. And it feels very sort of alienating in many ways because in in so many ways, home is India to me. And, you know, and I, and it's always, uh, I think it was also complicated because I'm an out lesbian and I, I was closeted for a long time and I didn't come out to people in India. Uh, and so I think home has also been complicated in that way of like, where can I be my own authentic self? That's right. As far as my film is concerned, as far as search is concerned, it is placed very much in the home that I live in, you know, which is a very sort of uh, an ancient building. It's coming apart at the seams. And uh, sooner or later, it's going to be brought down uh, for, a you know, to make way for apartments. And... Uh, but this is also the house that my grandmother lived in. And after the partition, you know, she came, uh, my grandparents uh, emigrated from Pakistan to Delhi. And uh, so this home seems to, you know, contain a lot of memories. And my grandmother died here and she died fairly young, actually. And... Uh, should I play that clip from my film? I'll just do that. Sorry for being so close. I was just about to say that. I said this would be a nice time to watch a clip. Yeah, yeah. Where is she now? Is she still around her ancient grindstone? Yeah, I, I just used the, you know, the red dupatta, that kind of came, the idea came to me from uh, the Partition Museum in uh, Amritsar. And there was this uh, installation, art installation, there was a well, and on it, uh, there was this Fulkari dupatta, which was kind of a symbol for all the women who died during the partition, uh, either as refugees or killed for honor killings, you know, like, they, they themselves jumped into wells or they were pushed by their, you know, male relatives into being sort of this honor killing thing, pushed into wells, that sort of thing. So I saw my grandmother suffering primarily because of the partition. And uh, so that's that's what I tried to evoke. And, and the use of uh, the old Alabama song, which was... Uh, uh, it was, it was a field recording by Al Alan Lomax and uh, it's it's a prison song actually. So I thought uh, I'm sort of, you know, trying to link up images of the partition 
those were images from life magazine of the partition with the you know this whole slavery american Af american slavery thing so that is the uh, the connection yeah i love that connection that you make across geographies because in some ways it's there's this sort of common thread of the fight for freedom right. uh, between like you know like across the globe and it's really amazing how you tie those together and i find this idea of like ending that 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 song so abruptly to be really like interesting i mean it, you it's you know it's very intentional and i'm curious about that decision of how you came to that I don't I like like I said the editing was very intuitive and uh, so I didn't really uh, think about it but I was watching 2001 a space odyssey today and I I thought some filmmakers have done that and that was a very intuitive film as well you know and uh, yeah it Sorry. defies expectations because we're so like you know we are we've been fed this diet of like viewing films where like music gradually fades yeah, out or there's yeah, some yeah. kind of a transition yeah. and so when it defies that expectation it really like stands out and it feels like whoa like that was a really sort of um, it makes you it gives you a moment of pause um uh, but i also find this idea of uh, this uh, the in terms of uh, my film 24 frames per day and and such so there's a way in which uh you've given voice to somebody like there's a in in your film it's this tree and there's this sort of dialogue also happening and i'm curious about the writing if you can talk a little bit about the writing of the the text itself the the text as in uh, the voice okay. overs they were uh, that came first that was the first in the stage of uh, writing and uh, the film went through quite a few changes in the writing phase itself and uh, it was all again very intuitive very personal and the the script was quite different compared to what the end result was because uh, the shooting was also you know at first i went with planned shots and then i realized that you know maybe i could just move the camera in some way or the other and do some very uh, sort of uh, you know impromptu kind of shots as well so the script really changed the the opening script and what came in the end the final edit which is also kind of writing uh, there was a huge difference between the two that's really interesting because for my film 24 frames per day which i'll show you in a second uh, yeah. i'll show you a clip from it also the the beginning of it really the seed for it came from the text of like the dialogue the conversations and me transcribing those conversations and so first i wrote out the script had that performance and then i thought of this idea of um which was for a different film altogether and then i thought well actually these two films can these two ideas can come together as a film my idea was that i was i realized i wasn't making films i was uh too busy teaching and i was i needed to sort of be more disciplined and i decided i'm going to take uh do this daily meditation of 24 photographs every single day and right. i took uh, uh i set up my camera at, uh, in my house and facing the front door because there was something i automatically looked at every day and i would uh i i i started taking these photographs every single day sometimes i would take 24 all in like one shot sometimes i would wait like an hour every day and then time it and and set an alarm and go and click a photograph and so i'll show you a, a short clip from 24 frames right. per day right you puerto rican no actually i'm indian Ah, Indian. Indian with a dot, Indian with a feather. Um Oh, Indian like Pakistani. Yeah. You Hindi or Muslim? 
Actually, neither. You know, I like Indian curry. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Also, Hindu movies with song and dance. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I watch with an Indian driver. Which music is coming? I'm from Delhi. Hello. Hello. Hello, Sihan. Kya sex hai aapki awaaz mein? Sexy voice, sexy body. Mere baare mein kya khayal hai? Do you find me sexy? Uh, can we get a car at the uh, northeast corner of Main and Danforth? You like music? Yeah. And that's a wrap of today's news. Implementing a strategy that will lead to victory in Iraq. And a victory in Iraq will make this country. So yeah, it actually took, I was just remembering that it took me nine months to make this film because I shot the first photograph that I took and the last photograph I took uh, was over a span of nine months. And so yeah. it's kind of interesting the amount of time it takes to make a baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think another thing that uh, I find common between us is, uh, you know, not spoon feeding the audience. And uh, when I would talk about my approach is to tell it a slant, you know, it's a film about schizophrenia, but uh, it doesn't have to be just about schizophrenia because it's also about form and it's also about texture, light and uh, like, like the pace of the film, the rhythm. It's also about that. And I find that in your films also. I found that in... 24 frames per day and I also found it in your other films you know uh, and yeah that's that's really cool I think also sound like I feel like our yeah. approach to sound is so we share this sort of kinship with sound because we both tap into like you know so what sounds can we use from various sources in order to tell our stories and and you know, in my case, the sound is performance, very similar to like your voiceover, um, sound effects, um, just mining through like sounds that I've recorded while traveling in India, um, sounds from the yeah, radio, yeah. newsreel, you know, archival yeah. sounds. And so yeah, yeah. there's a way in which I feel like we have that uh, in common yeah, as well. You've- juxtapose contraries together in your sound design in 24 frames yeah. and uh, the nagara and some very typically american sounds also and I really like the fact that the in the beginning of the film there's this uh, american accented man uh, talking and the quality of his voice is just like george bush's and then you get george bush's own voice also in the film so i really like that yeah i think that sort of sums it up. There's there's a way in which we both are sort of critiquing the world that we live in. I think this was the wonderful way for us to connect. I'm really glad I got to speak with you, Divya. And I Same hope here. that, uh, I think this is a wonderful uh, idea of having these conversations between filmmakers. And I hope that viewers will 
uh, join us every month as Vichitra Collective shares more conversation between filmmakers. Thank you to, for, for being here with us today. Thank you, Sonali. Thank you, Vichitra. And I love to hang out with you in Vasant Vihar. Will do.